Hello everyone, my name is João Bento and I'm here presenting our work, TimeShap, explaining recurrent models through sequence perturbations. So, let's get started. Recurrent neural networks are state-of-the-art in several sequential domains. From natural language processing to healthcare or fraud detection, these models excel at these sequential tasks because each prediction depends not only on the input at hand, but also on past elements of the sequence through the even state. The problem is that this is a really complex decision-making process and that renders RNNs as black boxes. Looking now at uh, decisions made on sensitive domains, these decisions really need to be understood because in these sensitive domains we are dealing with sensitive attributes, we are affecting people's lives directly, and only through the understanding of these decisions can we debug the models and trust the models. Looking now at RNNs, the fact that these models are really opaque, uh, when considered applying them to sensitive domains, it really makes a strong case for, for the development and the application of machine learning explainers that can explain recurrent neural networks. The problem is that currently there is little research work on explainers that can work for recurrent models. Looking at our specific use case, this work will focus on the fraud detection use case, where given a transaction, we are trying to classify that transaction as fraudulent or as legitimate. And to make that decision in an informed way, we need to consider the transactional history that led to that transaction. Um, recurrent neural networks really excel at this task, task because it is a sequential task. But because fraud detection is a really sensitive domain, we require um, the understanding of the decisions that we are making. And therefore, our use case requires an explainer that is POSOC, because we want to bring explainability to already trained and deployed models. It, our explainer should be model agnostic because we are explaining models that might only be accessible through a prediction-based API. So we don't, have, we don't have access to model internals like the weights of the model, the architecture or the gradients. And finally, we require an explainer that attributes importance to both input features and events to have different kinds and granularities of explanation to ease the understanding of the, the decision. One, one explainer that uh, fulfills some of our requirements is called SHAP. It was presented by Lundberg and Lee in 2017. And SHAP is a state-of-the-art POSOC model agnostic explainer, which um, the, the explanations that are produced by these explainers satisfy some interesting properties, them being local accuracy, where the sum of all feature attribution values will equal to the model score. Missingness, which states that if a feature does not impact the model, then its attribution must be null. And then we have consistency. So if a feature contribution to the model increases, its attributed importance should not decrease. Looking at kernel SHAP, which is the model agnostic implementation of the SHAP method, we see that kernel SHAP approximates the local behavior of a complex model with an explainable feature attribution model, which is usually a linear model. The learning of this linear model, this interpretable or explainable linear model, is then framed as a cooperative game where the model score is the reward and the features are the players, meaning that the, the score that the model attributes to the instance will then distribute, be distributed um, across the features that compose the instance itself. The solution to this learning um, task is given by the Shapley values, which will tell us how to fairly distribute the reward amongst the players. Kernel SHAP utilizes perturbations to understand and explain the model decisions. And here, the, the, the perturbations have the rationale of turning features on and off in order to understand the marginal contribution of the features to, to the model itself. Uh, because we cannot just turn on, uh, because we cannot remove a feature from the input vector and obtain a score, Turning off a feature in the context of SHAP means that when a feature is turned off, the original value of that feature is replaced by an uninformative background value, which usually on tabular data is the, the average of the feature on the training data set. But you can consider on image classification a background value being an image with all pixels turned off, for instance. Looking here at an illustration of, of, an, of a perturbation, we have our input vector being explained x. 
Then we have our binary mask Z, which a one represents that the feature is turned on and the zero represents the feature is turned off. So features two and four in this case are turned off. And then we have our background and informative instance. So our background values. So looking at the perturbation will look like the our original uh, vector being explained where features two and four are turned off here represented um, as you can see on the screen. This is formalized in this equation here. To obtain the exact Shapley values, SHAP needs to test all possible coalitions, so all possible um, uh, combinations of features turned on and off, which is intractable because it is an exponential problem. So to circumvent this, the Shapley values are only approximated by random, are then approximated by random sampling coalitions uh, to test which introduces a stochastic component. So different tested coalitions will render different explanations. SHAP is then formulated as our complex model given a perturbation will equal to our interpretable model given a mask and the co learned coefficients will then be served as the explanation or the attribution of each feature. Looking at kernel SHAP, but now applied on sequential domains, Kernel SHAP is not directly applicable to sequential decision-making tasks because out-of-the-box kernel SHAP only works on one-dimensional data. Adapting out-of-the-box kernel SHAP to recurrent domains is possible by freezing the hidden state, but the problem here or the issue here is that the recurrent nature of the data, the data and the model is ignored. So the objective for our work is to develop an explainer that takes into account the recurrent nat nature of the data and the model. So let's delve into our method time shape. But before a little bit of context, when we are talking about sequences, we are talking about matrices. So um, where a feature on our input matrix will represent a row on the, the input matrix. So the most relevant feature is a row. The most relevant column is an event. And because we have this notion of matrix, we can also obtain the most relevant cell. So a specific feature on a specific event. With this little bit of context, let's look at our method. So time shape builds on top of SHAP, on, on top of kernel SHAP, leveraging its properties and extending it to recurrent models. Time shape uses the same for SHAP formulation, but here, underlined here in red, is the main takeaway of time shape. We notice that by controlling the perturbation function and controlling the binary masks, we can control the obtained explanations. And this is the entry point for TimeShap. TimeShap will introduce new types of perturbation functions to obtain new types of explanations. So let's look at these explanations. The same rationale for TimeShap, the same rationale for kernel shap stands for TimeShap. To obtain feature-wise explanations, TimeShap will turn off features but now for the whole sequence. So consider the example for the illustrated perturbation, our mask Z tells us that feature two is turned off. So for all events of the sequence, feature two will be turned off, which means that the row corresponding to feature two will be all turned off, or in this case, the input, uh, the background and informative value for feature two will be inputted for the whole row. Considering this is formulated in this equation here. Looking at event-wise explanations, the same rationale stands where we time shape will turn off events for the whole sequence. In the illust illustrated uh, perturbation here, we see that events two and four are turned off and therefore columns two and four of the input vector will be also turned off here represented and illustrated, which means that if an event is turned off, all features belonging to that event will also be turned off. And in this case, events uh, two and four are turned off. When th this is formula, uh, formulated in this equation here. S one thing that we noticed, a, a problem that we faced, is that because sequences can be arbitrarily long in our domain, event level explanations become unreliable. Because consider that you have one, a sequence with 100 events, we have two to the power of 100 possible coalitions of events turned on and turned off, and not even the, the sampling strategy or the, approx the sampling strategy introduced by kernel SHAP is enough to, to approximate the, the, to accurately approximate the exact Shapley values. 
So when thinking about this, we notice that events in our domain are usually preceded by a long history of an important past event. And at the same time, recurrent models rarely encode information from events in the distant past. So given these insights, we propose a temporal coalition pruning algorithm that will reduce the number of considered events. Let's look at that algorithm now. Here we have uh, like a pseudocode of our uh, pruning algorithm, but the key takeaway here is that we want to find a group of older and um, sequential older events that do not impact the, the model decision deeply. So let's look at how we, how we achieve this. First thing, we divide the sequence into the, the group of older events here represented in red and the group of considered events here represented in green. And we start this algorithm with the group of considered events being only the event being looked at, the, the event being explained. Then we calculate the exact Shapley values for both groups. And if the importance for the group in red, the group of events, is smaller than the user-defined tolerance, it means that this, this, uh, all these events grouped they do not impact the, the model deeply. And therefore, they can be grouped together and they work as one. In the case of these events in red, showing that in the case that their Shapley value is high, they have a high contribution, we increase the, the size of the, the group of considered events. This might be analogous to giving more context to, to the model until the, the group in red, the group of older um, group events, uh, has a, a really small importance or a marginal importance. And here we can group the events together and we can claim that those events do not impact the model decision deeply and therefore they are older group uh, and important events. And we prune and the algorithm finishes. This is um, formalized in our paper in this algorithm here. Now the, that we have looked at uh, feature-wise explanations and event-wise explanations, let's look at, let's look at cell-wise explanations. Obtaining cell-wise explanations individually is intractable because if we consider uh, an, a simple matrix or a simple input matrix of 10 features and, for instance, 100 events, we would have 1,000 um, cells and therefore 2 to the 1,000 possible coalitions, which is intractable. And therefore, to obtain reliable cell level explanations, the number of considered cells needs to be drastically reduced. And here, TimeShap proposes a cell grouping strategy, which might be analogous to the temporal coalition pruning algorithm that we developed to make event level explanations reliable. So let's look at this grouping strategy. First, we start with a set of all possible cells, so our input matrix. And to that input matrix, we apply our pruning algorithm. And all cells that belong to pruned events will be grouped together and they will work as one cell individually. Next, we apply time shape to obtain the most relevant events and the most relevant features, so the most relevant columns and the most relevant rows, with the belief that the most relevant cells of the input matrix are assumed to be present on the intersection of the relevant events and features. Here we are um, obtaining different granularity of explanations, but what, what we notice here is that we lost a lot of granularity. So the next insight that we notice is that if the most relevant cells are assumed to be present on the intersection of the most relevant events and features, maybe some relevant cells are, are, might be present on the union of these relevant events and features. And this is what we did. So non-intersection cells that belong to relevant events are grouped here represented in shades of green. And non-intersection cells that belong to relevant features are also grouped here represented in uh, shades of blue. The last step to this cell grouping strategy is to group all unconsidered cells until now. This is what our um, cell grouping strategy looks like. And we were able to reduce the total number of cells from six, considered cells from 600, so each individual cell, to just 13 cell groups. Having looked at our uh, how time share produces explanations, event, feature, and cell-wise, let's look at our case study that we utilized to validate time share. 
So we applied TimeShap to a GRU-based model on a real-world account takeover fraud data set, and we applied TimeShap to explain all sequences that contain a positive prediction with the hyperparameters shown on the screen. The data set is a real-world account takeover fraud detection data set, and account takeover fraud represents a form of identity theft where a fraudster gains access to a victim's bank account and then places fraudulent transactions. The data, our data in, the, in this data set is tabular, consisting of approximately 20 million events, and each event represents one of three behaviors, a transaction, a transfer of money between accounts, a login, logging into a mobile app or your bank application, and an enrollment, which represents an account changing behavior. So changing a password, changing a logging in from a new device, or logging in from a new location, for instance. Each event has the corresponding type, some information about the location, some if, and some demographic information. So let's look at our results. First, let's look at our pruning algorithm analysis. We were able to, we can see that pruning reduces the median sequence length of the original sequences from 138 events on a, med a median of 138 events to only a median of 14, so a drastic reduction. For the original sequences, we could only compute about uh, the, we could only compute the exact Shapley values for about 10% of the sequences, and with the pruning, we are able to increase that percentage to 58.3. Looking at event global explanations, we see that the most relevant event is event present at t equals zero, so the event being explained with an average or the most recent event with an average contribution of 0.28. And on average, this contribution uh, represents only 41% of the sequences score, with the remaining 59% of the contribution coming from the Eden state or from the context that led to that decision. Another relevant thing to note here is that TimeShap captures significant contributions of distant events for some individual sequences. Looking at feature global explanations, we see that the most relevant features are in accordance to our domain knowledge, so transaction and event type, the client sage, and some location features. And the, the features that have a predominantly negative contribution to the score, and therefore legitimacy of the transaction, are related to authentication and security, which might indicate some legitimacy, as I said before. Looking at an individual example, we see an individual sequence. This sequence was original to, originally 286 events, uh, but with our pruning algorithm, we were able to prune it to the last nine. So we were able to group 276 events together. The most relevant event is the event, event at minus four, which is an enrollment followed by a login and followed by transactions, which is a known pattern that might represent a, a knacker um, changing the password, logging into device and placing fraudulent transactions. And another key thing here is that the event being looked at does not impact the decision at all as a contribution of zero. Looking at the most relevant features for this sequence, this sequence we see that transaction type and event type were the most relevant features followed by the client sage. And analyzing the raw data, we see that this account belongs to another individual. And then we see that the cell level, on the cell level explanations, that the most relevant cell is, the, the, is in the intersection of the most relevant event with the most relevant feature. Having looked at some examples of explanations, let's move to the conclusion to finish. So TimeShap is a POSOC model agnostic recurrent explainer that we obtained by extending kernel SHAP to the recurrent setting. TimeShap computes three types of explanations, so feature, event, and cell-wise. We propose a temporal pruning algorithm that reduces the explanation computation cost and explanation variance. And we validated and performed an empirical analysis on, of TimeShap on a real-world account takeover data set. And here we got some key insights. So the events and features deemed important by TimeShap were corroborated by domain experts. The event being explained is on average only responsible for 41% of the sequence's score. And the client sage is indicated as an important feature suggesting potential discriminatory reasoning that was later confirmed by about this, a bias audit on the model being explained. That's it for us. Thank you very much for listening and goodbye.